Hi, I'm Alex Paulton. I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Today, we're going to take a look at a rare Omega Speedmaster, the uh, double chronograph or uh, Ratrapante. Um, Ratrapante, Ratrapante, depending on, you know, how you pronounce it. But essentially, it's a uh, double chronograph, double stopwatch. And... Um, Let's take a close-up look at it, and we'll also open it up and have a look at the movement inside. Uh, but before I turn the camera around, please don't forget to subscribe. It's really important to the channel. Tell your friends to subscribe, too, please. So, let's flip the camera around and take a look at this really interesting uh, and rare Speedmaster. Here's the Omega Ratrapunt, or double chronograph, up close. A uh, beautiful rare but oddly unloved uh, member of the uh, Speedmaster family. I think it's more that there are so many special models that it is sometimes difficult to determine all of the ones out there. I like uh, having interesting uh, Speedmaster models to show all of you. As you know, I've got the uh, Speed Sonic with the tuning fork in it as well as uh, this one. And um, I used this in the explanation of how the uh, various uh, chronographs work because being a double chronograph, this has got an interesting functionality. Let's do that first real quick. And uh, essentially, if you're familiar with the way a chronograph works, you've got your uh, second hand, um, central seconds in 99.9% .9 of chronographs. Some funky quartz ones have uh, sub-second uh, and some funky mechanical versions also have uh, sub-second I mean, a uh, subdial seconds, but the m most uh, chron uh, chron uh, chronographs have um, center seconds. Now, the difference with a retropont or a double chronograph and a regular chronograph is that there are literally two chronograph mechanisms, or I, sh or I shouldn't say two chronograph mechanisms, two chronograph uh, second hands, because there is a clutch mechanism that when you push it, keep an eye on the second hand now, it leaves behind a um, split second counter. So it's not that there are two chronograph mechanisms in there uh, whizzing away, it's that there's um, two chronograph hands, one that can be locked and the other that continues. And then when you push it again, it catches up, hence the term uh, ratrapant, which is uh, French for catching up. So it's really a beautiful piece with a very interesting horological uh, functionality, you know, it's not just a Speedmaster with a different color scheme. And I think that's the biggest problem people have with uh, Speedmaster Special Editions is they, in their mind, they're thinking it's just, you know, an Ultraman with a color scheme, whereas there are some very interesting Speedmasters out there. Like this one, if you notice, has got a, it's hard to tell in this uh, lighting, but it's got a carbon fiber face that gives it a three-dimensionality uh, and depth to the face that you don't get with a uh, regular face. So Omega really went out of their way to make this a special um, watch because not only does it have the carbon fiber face, it also has a, a huge case, very similar to the X33, which is Omega's uh, new digital, I shouldn't say new, but uh, latest digital space watch, the ones that NASA has been using since the Speedmaster for the last few decades. But this is a really, really beautiful um, piece of watchmaking. You know, um, when you think about it, look at this. I mean, it's a very solid, beefy case. It's got your traditional uh, Speedmaster bracelet. Although, one of the things I found very interesting is that it's very aggressively shaped. You don't find Speedmasters with you know a standard Hesolite or sapphire sandwich with such an aggressive end link. I really like the way that they didn't just tack on a Speedmaster bracelet, that they actually made a Speedmaster bracelet that suited the bulkiness and uh, beefiness of the case. Because like I said, look at the way that that uh, center uh, portion of the end link is just so aggressively profiled. It comes out very, very well. See some, yeah, you see, and so you might take a look at some of that. The um, bezel, the timing bezel is, uh, could be aluminum. Uh, 
steel, I believe. Uh, it polished uh, relatively well. I didn't want to over polish, obviously, because there were numerals, but there were a lot of there were a lot of fine scratches on it when I picked it up. Uh, the pushers are big and chunky, very well done. The uh, crown does not screw down, but then again, uh, it's not designed for diving. It's designed for uh, racing or uh, flying. And then it's got your uh, Omega seal on the back, but it doesn't say first uh, watch on the moon because this is a 7750 based movement. It's not the original um, uh, 381 or the uh, 18, I for, 1831. I forget the uh, e exact nomenclature of the uh, movements that are in the moon watch, but it's not in here. This is a straight up and down uh, Valjoux 7750 modified to be a double chronograph. It's the Omega 3600 movement, they call it. Um, it's different from the IWC double chronograph movement, which was uh, famously designed by Habring, and it uses an interesting clutch mechanism. We'll open this up and take a look at the uh, mechanism inside of this one. So let's put it down and... Um, we will do all of that in editing. So from here, we will go and uh, have the version and open up the back. I'll pop the bracelet so it's easier to see the back and we'll open it up. So. Now, it's got a core. That's interesting. I didn't realize that this was an anti-magnetic version. Um, but then again, this could just be a protecting shield. It might not be an anti-magnetic core. It's uh, thinness and the weight makes me think that it's um, just a protective shield. Um, but I'll look into that some more. I didn't see anything in the nomenclature for the 3600 that says that it is a um, anti-magnetic movement. So that's almost certainly just a uh, protective cap of some kind. So let's zoom in on there. And there you see uh, the watch beaten away. It's got eight. It's an eight-beat watch, and uh, not just eight-beat watch. It's like I said, the Omega thirty-six hundred, and um, it's got twenty-eight joules and a forty-two-hour power reserve. And it was introduced in nineteen ninety. This watch was only available for about two years, three years, uh, nineteen ninety-nine to like I believe two thousand and one. And um, if you notice, this does not have. Um, if, you, if you're familiar with the way the movement on the IWC, I don't own one or I'd have a picture of it for you, but the IWC uses a very interesting uh, tweezers-like uh, clutch for the uh, Rattrapant mechanism, and this one obviously does not. You don't see huge um, tweezer-like grabbers, but obviously it does the job. Um, a very, very nice movement. Reasonably well finished for a movement that they didn't expect anybody to see, uh, and uh, just a nice piece of kit, nice solid rubber gasket. You know, I mean, it's not meant for diving, but at least uh, it's not a pansy when it comes to water uh, rejection, as it were. So yeah, really nice piece. So let's throw the back back on and um, we'll put it on the wrist and uh, do some measurements and see how it looks overall. Okay, so. Got the back back on, bracelet back together. One of the things to note about the bracelet, it has two, two really little points of micro adjustment right there. So you can adjust it a little itty, itty, itty bit. It's got, you know, your traditional Speedmaster livery, uh, forged fold clasp. Like I said, very beefy in its outlines. And um, let's take some quick measurements. Zoom out a little bit more. Um, so right off the bat, it's 15.7 uh, thick, which, I mean, it's a very beefy case, very beefy watch. That's to be expected. Um, let's just measure it. Well, this actually extends beyond the bezel. So and it's a 42, pretty much straightforward, which is pretty good. Uh, and uh, lug to lug, it's... Not it, it the, the lugs slope very aggressively, so it's only about a 47 lug to lug. So for being a chunky watch, it you know for a chunky watch it doesn't really um, overwhelm the wrist as it were. I would say you could probably wear this on a wrist as small as say uh, 17 centimeters. Now here let's uh, do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing my um, 
Zenith uh, Chronomaster Open Heart on a uh, NATO. Because it is a very fancy watch, but it takes very well to dressing down if you have the right strap on it. Um, I have a video on this watch. Please check out the archive. So let me take this off. And um, let's throw this on the wrist. My tattoo's healing. I put a, a logo of the show on it as a tattoo because I, as a celebration for uh, passing a thousand subscribers and getting monetized. So there we go. Um, fits very well. The bracelet is very comfortable. You know, Speedmaster bracelet's pretty supple. And uh, yeah, it looks sharp. It is a really nice looking piece and like i said because of the aggressively downturned lugs it really sits well i mean this is a really nice watch it has great wrist presence and um with the rachapant you have a parlor trick you know show people 90 percent of the people you meet have never seen a split chronograph ever work and even that uh, i've i've discovered that even people who have no idea or interest in watches are actually impressed when they see the split second hands um separate you know that's something they don't see even in a quartz watch or a smart watch so that's one of the nice things about this it has an old school uh horological functionality that you do not see everywhere the uh double chronograph so let's turn the camera around and um close out the episode so that was the uh omega speedmaster double chronograph uh Rattrapant. Beautiful watch, very, very collectible. If I, in my humble opinion, they only made it for a couple of years at the turn of the last century, or at the turn of this century, I should say. And um, it's not one you see often. So even in a world there where there are a lot of special model uh, Speedmasters, this one stands out quite a bit, actually. So thanks for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.